Instead of an empty circle, you have an empty like ellipse or room or the thing with an empty ellipse is uh, the, the two dimensions of the ellipse seem, seems to be a little awkward. I don't know, probably a lens, maybe a lens, two, two lenses. Yeah, which is close to. Uh, Spherical influence graphs, I guess. Yeah. But every time, and I came up with a camera example to a hypothesis I had about the long term relations, but I could only make it a camera example when the thing was very, very close to the line. So I feel like there might be something right behind it, uh, approaching the line, but not. Okay, that's problem one. Uh, Second problem is um, counting building paths. In a particular sense, this picture will make it clear. Suppose you have a number of rectangles, axis parallel rectangles in the plane, all within one other rectangle. And all the edges are mirrors. And the billiard path is a path that reflects off of each edge as if it's a mirror. Angle of instance is the angle of reflection. Here I chose 45 degrees. And now imagine all the edges are labeled. I just labeled the ones where it bounces. And I want to um, 
look at closed billiard heads that come back and close upon themselves and are simple. So it's, it's a simple polygon. And you can write down, let's say I call this a signature of the labels that you hit. So this hits label one at the bottom, then two, then three, then seven, then three, then five, six, five, six, four, and it's in a cycle. And I want to define the length of the cycle to be the, the length of the, of the signature to ignore the bounces between five and six. Because obviously you could put them very narrow and you get a lot of bounces and that's somehow irrelevant. So I want to kind of use this power notation to say that this, this has length eight because the five six is repeated twice. So just kind of squash that out. So this is, uh, a simple closed billiard head, and uh, you have n rectangles. So a number of questions. What is the longest signature that you can get with n rectangles? Uh, and how many distinct uh, signatures? At uh, when we fix the angle, say, say here it's 45 degrees. If you fix some angle, what is the number of distinct signatures that you can get? And maybe the number of distinct signatures over all angles. Third 
into space. <laughs> so, what I mean is, uh, you, you have a sphere, and uh, you, you put a, a line through it, put it out here, and another line, etc. Oh, let me just have one. <laughs> and you want to uh, minimize the maximum distance between points in the sphere. Let's say that's radius one. So without any line, the distance between two points could be as large as two. But now with this line here, when you reach the line, you can move very quickly through the tube and zero time to anywhere else. So the tubes are like a transportation device. And um, so, so for example, if you have uh, a sphere with a line right through the center, this is completely useless because uh, points on the equator from here to here, they can't make use of this super fast transportation line. They just they're still too apart. So, and if you if you put the line over here, then still uh, the equator formed by the plane perpendicular to this line means that this is still this is too apart. So I, I think one line can't help. You. So here, here are two lines. And I think these don't help either. <laughs> <laughs> so these are orthogonal. The, the center is uh, where those arrows are. And they're separated. So, so that particular distance yeah. Let's see. Um, so the uh, right. Okay, I see. It now. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm not sure how to draw this. Maybe drawing is, is hopeless. Um, so the perpendicular plane along the lines is yes. not helpful. But exactly. also the plane that goes through the line is not helpful. Right. Okay. So so right. So take the plane orthogonal to the vertical line and through the horizontal line. Then, in typical points on that equator, are still too apart. So my first question is, can, can you ever improve things with two lines? And my second question is, can you improve things with three lines? My n minus first to seven. So this is the case of two lines. Can you ever help this two lines? Because you always have the third axis that is perpendicular. No, no, no. There always is one direction that's perpendicular to those. Yeah, the, the two vectors, the those lines, the line plane, the, plane, the normal direction to that plane. Look, if you take the line, if that direction through the origin, those two points will always. But why does it have the origin? Yeah, we don't have the origin. What did you say, Stefan? I couldn't hear it. Yeah, it should, it's, I mean, it's the same thing. If you take the direction that's, that's sort of orthogonal to both. Ah, oh, take the cross product of the two. I mean, yeah. you, 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 take, you take a plane parallel to both lines, you take a perpendicular to that. No two points that are aligned in that direction can be proved by this. Okay. Okay, so we, we've solved one and two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know the answer in the plane? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a, a fourth. <laughs> what do you mean? But can we stay with this just for a second? Uh, yeah, suppose I cool. do, you have you know, alter x, y, z. It's the best. Best way to place this two. Can you get the center? Yeah, right through the center. 
So it seems that if you're anywhere like over here, you can go to so it appears that you can improve things with three lines, and you can't with two. But it's, uh, how much can you improve it? Is this the best arrangement? Let's see. So we should go back to the two dimensional questions. And the direction, if you want to improve them with all this, you need to expand the three dimensional direction. Right. Well, you didn't have to say to me if you take the axis going from infinity distance to our one distance. Or Right, so this, this may, maybe the biggest distance here is this two or something like that. Mm -hmm. I have to calculate it. Rather than two. Yeah. Asymptotics in terms of number of stopping lines? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing that they use to prove bounds on uh, on things like uh, MST of points in a, in a cube or something, right? The, you stab the thing with a grid of lines. Uh, huh. and you're never more than a... MST being? Uh, the minimum spanning oh, tree of is. points in a, in a, let's say, unit square. Uh -huh. So somebody said we should think about this in 2D. Who said that? So that, that would be yeah. two again. Yeah. 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 Uh, now how about three lines? What can I do with it? What's the optimal? Yeah. This is probably the optimal. I guess, what else can we do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess there are powers in mind. Keep by Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 So, so the trick is you're tricking three. Once you get on this, you can go anywhere you know, else is free. You want to minimize the distance from the way down. Okay, we should move on to the And I'll take notes of the article. All right, who would like to close our percentage problem, I think? David? We've got a lot to say. So there's three parts to this, but uh, the first two are about um, this point set. Can we take the coordinates 0, 1, and 2, or plus minus 1, 0, for in d-dimensional space, and so that gives you something like a different cube, but with three points in each direction rather than two. Um, if we partition by the number of one coordinates, 
that gives us d plus one general position subsets. Um, and on the other hand, that L Stewart theorem says that if we want a partition with a general position subset, we need something on it. That's very tiny. Um, but the Hale Stewart theorem is too strong because it's asking for a partition that. Um, it says if you if you're not if you're trying to avoid monotonic lines, lines where a uh, three points where the three coordinates either stay constant or grow monotonically, but not lines where you're allowed to mix some coordinates going up and some coordinates going down, then you still need a not a constant number of, of pieces in your general partition. So if you're trying to avoid all lines of three points. Um, it could be the case that you need actually quite a larger number of general position subsets. So the question is, can we do any better than this? So that's part A. Um, part B is almost the same. It asks if you look at the subset of this set of points with uh, d over three ones, that subset is in general position and has, I want to partition into fewer sets. If you take the subset with the largest number of ones, that is in general position, and its size is theta of the number of points over square root of d. Um, and the density scale of Joule theorem tells us that we need 3 to the d over or we go one. Um, but maybe there's even larger general position subsets in here, I don't know. And part C is the output of the question. If I give you endpoints and D dimensions where the plane doesn't really make a difference. And we use a greedy Partition or a greedy um, algorithm for a large general position subset. That greedy algorithm, it's easy to show, has approximation ratio um, theta of square root n. And I would like to be significantly better than that. Can we get O of M to the a half minus epsilon? Because I think it may be possible to shave a log of that, but I would like that. Um, yeah. Both of those problems are interesting. But I don't know anything about partition properties. So your turn of position is what? No three in the line. Next problem.
divided by a square root of log n. So you can't do, I, I can't go for less than square root n. I can do it for the complete binary tree because you can do everything for the complete binary tree. I strongly suspect we can do little of n if it's balanced in any particular way that you can actually produce or things like that. We can probably do, but I want it for an arbitrary binary tree without any knowledge of the law. So I cut these trees in nasty with slashes. Yeah, that's <laughs> where you get that <laughs> That's exactly the motivation, yes. But that's the drawings I was studying. And the, the, the annoying thing is suddenly I forbid you to use the word. So that's little o of n or? Little o of n. Okay. I can do it with big o of n pretty straightforward. And ideally, actually, I would like order square root n, but that might be asking for not much. So anything, anything a lot smaller than n, I think might be. I have not looked or searched terribly much whether any of the existing ones might prove this, so this has not been worked on much. This could be easy. I don't know. It could also be. Oh, I didn't say about planar. I had meant to try this a second bullet about planar. No, no crossings in that one. Maybe add that if you don't have the other. So what, what is the easy linear? Um, is it, can you just describe it? I, I will trim things 90 degree and then there's methods that draw a big image. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, if I don't have to be, yeah, there, there should be an easy, I don't need to think about it for that. Uh, so we have all sorts of drawings that, that achieve order. So, uh, I don't see this on the diagonal That's been well studied. And it depends on whether you want to be order preserving or not, and whether you want to be outward or not. So give me the model that I can look up what it is. Next problem. I think I missed something. How do we know that we have only 
four yeah. points in that joke? I don't think that's true at this No, point. Yeah, no, it's not this. It's a different definition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It seems this would be easy to get with a flip algorithm because flip, when it's, uh, you know, when it violates the, the weaker. Or so, if I take every um, 
edge where there exists a circle through it that has at most 10 points inside it. Okay. Uh, if I take that graph, that graph has a Hamiltonian cycle inside it. So we know that if every edge has zero points inside of it, uh, it has a perfect matching. If it has 10 points inside of it, it has a Hamiltonian cycle. Um, at most the gap ten. between zero and ten. At most ten or uh, at, at most ten. Yeah. So it's a gap between zero and ten. And there is a Delaunay triangulation found Hamiltonian. There is a Delaunay triangulation. Dylan Court has an example of how many? Was it twenty? Twenty? No, that's just eight. Eight? Only eight? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Bill Court has an example of where. Yeah. And, uh, and he was trying to prove that they all had. He was trying to prove they all had a Hamiltonian cycle. Yes. And, yes. and the perfect graph was the, the, the constellation price. Yes, exactly. Perfect match Yeah, the perfect matching of the. So that was. But uh, yeah, there's no Hamiltonian cycle in the I was working with Ferran and we were looking at these things and so we, we came up with an example with I think we showed that 14 had a Hamiltonian cycle and then Maria brought it down to 10. And uh, well, we don't know what the right answer is. More problems? Yeah.
of the points on the sphere. And then you, you just take any plane at random and you project it back down and it gives you a circle and the circle will be a separate. So in, in well, modulo this projection which would take in your time, uh, after that in constant time you find it separate. So, so this representation, at least in this representation, is a very good one for finding separate. Yeah. You can actually find a separate. And there's many other nice uh, intersection uh, representations of planar graphs that, uh, that, that, that are easy, that, that makes it, make it easy to find separators. Will you, without kissing this separate or that method, yeah. will that guarantee a, a small separator? Uh, yeah, with, well, no, so with, some, with hyperbole. You can make okay. it deterministic. Yeah, you can, okay. But, but then you lose the constant time. <laughs> it's linear time and stuff. Yeah, then it's linear time. Yeah. But it's still linear time. I, mean, I, I would be happy with anything better than n log n for the, uh, for the, for the 3D context. Okay. So, you know, you, you would hope that, you know, somehow <laughs> when, you, when you take your points and then you could find a nice, you know, you take the convex cell, you could find a nice plane that doesn't intersect too many edges or something like that. That's false, of course. If I, if I give you points that are just many points clustered around the vertices of the tetrahedron, yeah. uh, you know, then any, and any plane that goes through, uh, uh, you know, through that, through three points will just cut a linear number of edges. So, so, so you will need a separator that makes some zigzags around the around the convex cell, uh, and uh, uh, but but you so you could think uh, instead of a vertex separator, you could think of a path separator. You could try to to draw a path on the surface of your convex cell that would be of size square root n. So, so you, you, you could the answer is a size square root n, which makes it you know some. some somehow makes you suspect that you should be able to do it in faster than n log n. But on the other hand, if I give you that path of size square root n, you want to check that it's a good separator, it will actually take you n log n time to decide on which side of that path you point on. Uh, but that, that is not a lower bound because if there's many cases in computational geometry where uh, finding an answer uh, is cheaper than actually verifying the answer. Like for example, a center point. Like if you a set of endpoints in the plane, you can find a center point in linear time. But if I give you a point and check it, that it's a center point, <coughs> that has a real bound of n. Okay. So you know, so these are the arguments one way or the other, and I really don't know what the answer is. I would really appreciate if any of you. Suppose the points are on the surface of the sphere. So that you actually get a prolonged time. Yeah. Uh, it still seems like that doesn't fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that for that case. Even for that case. The case that you would like is actually the one where the edges of the all over tangent is. Ah, like in the mid point? Because that's the same as the one that I found. So you could, so Joe's version, you could say I could points in the plane, and I want to find a separate with the line in my relation without making the line. So, so even, even for that, I, I, I thought about that question too, and, and I, uh, I don't know how to do that. So. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's a tricky points in the plane, uh, find the separator for the plane. Uh, or the point as well. Yeah. Or any other nice choice you draft you find. It reminds me of this old paper you know, thread of the points you want to find the wrong A. Small. Yeah. Well, there should be one that's for that. 
Oh, yeah, so th that's true. So if you give me, no, no, that's the problem. If you give me the red and the, red and the blue points that are on the two sides of the partition, uh, the, the boundary would be of size for them. Uh, our algorithm will find it in the time that's, uh, that's still in log n, because it's n log, n log the size of the boundary, which is very dead. So which is still in So just want to make sure I understand. You're given the points in advance, but you're given the circle at query time, and the circle passes through a given fixed point. Yeah. yeah.
Uh, we're given a bunch of intervals, and they all have a value. And in between the intervals, there's blanks. So I have to think of them as nodes. So uh, for simplicity of the problem, we're going to wrap the uh, end point around. So you can imagine a version of here, which is the same as And you're given a set of integers, which fits into the set. And what you want to do is to maximize